Welcome to Prehim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 85 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about anonymous authentication. First, let's understand the terms authentication and authorization. Authentication is the process of identifying users. Authentication basically answers the question, who is the user? Is the user who he claims to be? In ASP.NET, there are several techniques to authenticate users. For example, we can make use of Windows authentication, forms authentication, passport authentication, etc. We'll be talking about these different authentication techniques in a very great detail in a later video session. So what's authorization? Authorization is the process of granting access to those users based on their identity. Now authorization happens after we authenticate users. Authorization basically answers the questions like what rights the user has and what resources can they access. Together, authentication and authorization secures our web applications from intruders. But most of the public websites that we see in the, on the internet today, they don't really ask users to enter any kind of username or password, but still we are able to access the content of their websites. So how are we able to do that? Because they provide anonymous access to the resources on their web servers to the users by using a technique called anonymous authentication. Does ASP.NET provide anonymous authentication? Absolutely. So how does IIS, you know, which hosts ASP.NET web applications, provides anonymous access? In IIS 6.0, you know, there used to be an account called IUSR underscore computer name. So if my computer name is XYZ, IUSR underscore XYZ is the name of the account that provides anonymous access in IIS 6.0. Whereas in IIS 7.0, that's actually replaced with just IUSR account. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET Web Application project with Web Form 1 and within the page load event of this Web Form 1, if you look at this, I have a very simple code here, hardly eight lines of code, and this one is a static text application code executed using. So basically we are trying to print the name of the account that is used to execute this ASP.NET application code. And to do that, I'm using the Windows identity class within system.security.principal namespace. And this class has got this get current static method and the return type of that, you know, which returns a Windows identity object. And I'm using the name property to retrieve the name of the account that is used to execute ASP.NET applications code. And then look at that. Is the user authenticated? We are trying to print if the user, whoever is trying to access this application, is he authenticated or not? Look at that. The property that I am using is is authenticated, and that's that's on user dot identity object. Okay, look at that. If the look at the property, it's a boolean property that returns a true or a false. True if the user is authenticated, otherwise false. Okay, and if the user is authenticated, then what? authentication type is used and authentication type is a string property and what is the name of the authenticated user and that's also a string and is authenticated authentication type and name all of them are actually dependent on user dot identity okay now remember we are using anonymous authentication here okay so that's where form one now uh, this application is not associated with the local IIS. By default, Visual Studio uses uh, the built-in ASP.NET development server, but instead of that, let's associate this to IIS. And to do that, I get to the properties of my web application project, click on the web tab, and navigate to servers, and select use local IIS web server. And I don't have uh, a an application within IIS with web application one name. So let's go ahead and create that. And to do that, expand IIS. And to open IIS within the run window, type INET MGR, INET Manager, and click OK. That should open up IIS. Within IIS, expand the root node and then expand sites, default websites. So let's go ahead and create an application. So add application. I'm going to call this web application one. And it's making use of the default app pool application pool. And where is this application present? It's present in my C drive. And the name of the application is web application one. That's the solution. And that's the web application project folder. 
select that, click OK. So we have this web application one. OK, now, how do I know if the application is using anonymous authentication or not? To, to find that out, you know, I have this application selected, and this is the features view. Okay, so within the features view within IIS, you have under IIS section, you have authentication icon. Double click that, look at that, anonymous authentication is enabled, and all the other authentication techniques are disabled. Okay, so anonymous authentication enabled. And then on the right hand side in the actions pane, let me click this edit, and look at that, the user account that is used by default is IUSR. By the way, the version of IIS that I have is IIS 7.5. So this is IIS version 7.5. Okay, so basically anonymous authentication is enabled. So I click edit IUSR. If you have, you know, IIS 6.0, then it it would have been IUSR underscore whatever is your machine name. So that's the account that is used by IIS to provide anonymous access. Okay, so if I want to change this account to something else, I can do that as well. For example, instead of using IUSR account, I can use any other account. For example, on this machine, I have two user accounts. Okay, and how do I figure out what are all the Windows accounts that I have on this machine? Uh, go to Start right click on your computer, select manage, that should bring up the computer management window and within computer management window you can see something called local users and groups and if I expand that, I click on users, look at that, there are two you know accounts that I have here, Prasad and Venkat and apart from that I have the built-in accounts, administrator, guest, home group user, etc. So now I can use any of these accounts you know, to provide anonymous access as well. But by default, it's going to be iUser. For example, if I want to use Venkat account, I have to give the right username and a right password. So let me type in the password, confirm that password, and click OK. So instead of iUSR, now I'm using a specific user account. Or I can use application pool identity. Okay, we know that, you know, this web application one is actually associated with default app pool. And this default app pool is executed. If you look at the advanced settings of this default app pool, you know, the identity it's using by default is application pool identity, but you can choose any of the other accounts as well, local service, local system, network service, etc. But by default, it's going to be application pool identity. So that account can be used as well to provide anonymous access. So let's go back to authentication. Let's edit that. Let's put it back to, so it's back to IUSR anyway because we didn't click OK there. But remember, you can change the identity that is associated with anonymous authentication. But by default, it's going to be IUSR in IIS 7.0. All right, so now let's go ahead and, uh, okay, so we have the application, we have web application one. Let's save that and let's run this web form. So as you might expect now, we are using anonymous authentication. So when the web form loads up, you should see a message stating that, you know, the authentication type, I mean, is user authenticated? Look at that, false, because we are using anonymous authentication. And authentication type, if authenticated, that's empty, because the user is not authenticated, so there's no authentication type associated, and similarly, no username. But the application code is executed using IS app pool backslash default app pool. Now, this might be a little confusing at this point. If you look at the way IS is providing access to the resources, when I say resources, this web form one is actually a resource within our web application one. So we are allowing access to this web form one using anonymous app authentication. Okay, but if you remember, we were actually using IUSR account to provide anonymous access. So if we go to anonymous authentication, click on edit. So we are using IUSR. So, but then when the application executed, it's actually using the default app pool account to execute the application code. So you might be wondering why is it not using IUSR? That's because IAS you know, when the request comes to IIS, it's the IUSER account that, that, you know, that's that's there to provide anonymous access. But once the request is handed over to the ASP.NET web application, now 
the application pool identity is used to execute uh, you know the application code but that can be changed using something called impersonation we're going to talk about impersonation in the next video session so by default anonymous authentication is enabled in IIS if we don't want anonymous authentication we can disable that so how do we disable that we can disable that within IIS as well so all I can do is click on that disable button so disable anonymous authentication is disabled so obviously at the mo moment we are not using any authentication technique to authenticate users and we have disabled access to anonymous users okay so obviously when I run this now you know I am not authenticated and anonymous users are not um, allowed to access this page look at that you are not authorized to view this page due to invalid authentication headers so you don't have permissions you know unauthorized you don't have permissions to access this page okay because we have disabled anonymous access as well okay now is the IS only way to disable um, authentication no let's go ahead and enable that we can also do that we can also disable um, anonymous access to resources from web.config file and how do we do that within web.config file you can have an authorization element so authorization and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say deny users is equal to question mark so basically what we are saying here we are denying anonymous users access question mark indicates anonymous users so we are saying deny anonymous users access whereas allow users is equal to question uh, star so deny access to anonymous users rest other users allow access so now you know if you look at IIS we have disabled anonymous authentication which means you know the request can come through IIS but then when it reaches web.config file within web.config file we are specifically saying disallow anonymous access okay so now even now when we run this we are gonna get the same message that uh, the access to the resource is denied so basically access is denied okay but on the other hand you know it's very important that you have the deny element on top of allow element because whatever is the first matching if I have it like this you know when the request comes in you are saying allow users is equal to star allow everybody access so this rule is satisfied so the access will be allowed let me run this and look at that I will now be able to access I'm able to access the file that's because in spite of me having here deny users is equal to question mark you know at this line the you know this condition became true so it will never come here and the request will be serviced that's why a anytime you want to deny something to somebody it's always best to have deny on the top of your authorization list we'll be talking about authorization uh, in in further video sessions as well okay but on the other hand you know obviously as I told you we can enable or disable authentication either in IIS or in web.config file and we have seen how to change the account that is associated with anonymous access as well. In the next video session, we are going to discuss about impersonation. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.